pleasure to come speak to you this afternoon. I know I'm the, the final speaker holding you back from uh, refreshments and entertainment, uh, so we'll get going. The, the topic I want to talk about is accelerating innovation with our theme uh, and really collaborating uh, for a better world. Slides. And, I, and I think it stay in, in line with a lot of the conference uh, topics, wonderful speakers that we've heard, uh, is basically challenging the organization uh, essentially with what we do uh, and collaborating for the future. Our work today has such an impact on the future and it's so important. I really uh, will reemphasize that uh, throughout the, the presentation. But you see here a future city, a city that was probably generatively designed. We talked about artificial intelligence designing parts. That same technology is designing full buildings. We see a city with hyperloops, new transportation. We see optimized buildings. We see buildings probably constructed by generative robots, which is actually going on right now. Uh, we see probably cyber agriculture, which is also happening. That's bringing food production, vertical farms into the city. 90% less water, uh, a fraction uh, of the, the total supply chain cost. We have so much going on as an industry and it's such an exciting time. Um, this is also like a family reunion. It's so good to see uh, so many people and you guys have been incredibly um, supportive. All the great comments, like don't script your presentation. <laughs> um, I hope your presentation is really good. So I, I really appreciate the, all the feedback. Uh, as we mentioned, uh, I want to cover a lot of topics uh, this afternoon and, and get through those. It's because there's a lot going on. This is the, the most disruptive renaissance in technology across so many technology fronts. Uh, and that's what's exciting, but it's also what's challenging. And I'm here as an industry professional. This is not a talk uh, on Amazon. I'm going to cover a lot of things that we're doing on Amazon, but this is participating with industry, giving back. These are gonna be a lot of my experiences and views. Um, also, any image that you see here uh, is obtained in, in public uh, source, uh, honoring anybody's copyright. This is all for the express purpose uh, of teaching and sharing. So, when, when I started thinking about putting together this talk, here are just a few of, of the technologies our, our industry and our organization is working in, and these big topics. There, there's no possible way to basically cover in 45 minutes what we're doing and dealing with uh, as an industry. But if you just go across uh, some of the some of the technologies uh, that we're working at, some of the emerging technologies. This is literally what maybe a response proposal might look like from a, from our integrators and that type of thing. Uh, exosuits, powered exosuits are are emerging or here. You know, today, when we talk about developing a smart machine, it's everything from neural nets. CPU is old technology, by the way. Don't call a computer a CPU. If anybody is in the compute industry, the, they will correct you. Uh, it's a system on chip now. We'll talk a little bit about that. But I think not only is this our big opportunity, it's our biggest challenge. How do we, how do we align all of this? How do we organize it? How do we define it? How are we pulling this into standards, architecture standards for our industry moving forward? And I think that's one of the most important things. By the way, in this presentation, um, I'm going to use a technique in engineering called inverting the problem. So I'm gonna ask you all of the questions uh, in, in this presentation, okay? So we'll, we'll invert the problem. So let me, let's take a look at this. Let's see if we can simplify this and talk about really what I see are the five major technical themes, technical quadrants that we're all working on. And we talked about some of these. I'll start with supply chain. Supply chain, is, as we've heard from, from numerous speakers, is evolving quickly. And I won't get 
I won't get uh, tied up between are we in supply chain 4.0 or 5.0. Somebody will catch me after this and say we're in industry 5.0. I would just like to say, can we just finish industry 4.0 first? So, uh, but I want to talk to you about these these five key areas: supply chain 4.0. What are we seeing in terms of the big trends, uh, the future, standard architectures, compute 2.0. Compute 2.0 is the intelligence foundation of everything on this chart. Driving edge, driving autonomy, driving intelligence, blockchain, you name it, Compute 2.0. I want to share some of the, some of the more recent developments uh, in, in, in this area. Workforce, we've all talked about workforce today. Industry 4.0, we've all heard it. It's actually gaining what I believe is architecture. It's being defined by a lot of companies. Uh, I think it is so important because it helps us align all of these technologies to a playbook, a clear plan. And that's been my role uh, at Amazon for quite some time, designing the facilities, designing all, all of the uh, automation infrastructure, all the connectedness, all the smart systems, the robotics, that type of thing. It's not just one type of building, it's supply chain wide. It's not just the building, it's everything around the building, especially with the workforce. And sustainability, I intentionally put that in the center. I think that is going to be the biggest topic our industry deals with in the next 10 years. It may not be rolling out fully AI, but it may be a pivot in AI, how AI helps us reduce half of the cost or half of the power consumption in a factory. There were some great examples shared of, of parts that basically were 50% smaller, 50% stronger. And if we use the performance metrics from the compute industry, PPA, power, performance, and area, I believe that same type of performance architecture is, is already in, in our material handling industry, in our, our, our automation industry. How do we take half of the power out of the systems we're engineering for sustainability. If you, if you haven't looked at the global resource charts, uh, take a peek. We're gonna have 11 million people on the planet um, fairly soon. And if you look at, if you look at the, the resource charts, the consumption charts, maybe for the first time here in Phoenix next year, there could be water rationing. Uh, if you haven't seen the Lake Mead, uh, the water uh, projections, we have some real challenges laying ahead. So sustainability, I think, is going to be at the core of everything we do. And by the way, I believe this is one integrated architecture. That sounds big, but you don't get one part of this. If you implement Industry 4.0, you have to think about workforce. We have to think about Compute 2.0. It has to tie to supply chain 4.0. It's one architecture. The first step. Do you have a culture of uh, innovation and technical leadership? And, and I think that is absolutely imperative. How do you know? How do you measure it? Um, what, are, what are your mechanisms to, to know that you're a culture of innovation and driving innovation? I want to talk about two things, continuous intelligence and continuous innovation. Um, if, you, if you thought about the if you thought about the categories that we've already talked about were interesting, uh, just think about robotic convergence. Not only from the total business environment, the computer science environment, and, and the machine environment, robotic convergence is basically the byproduct of many, many techn emerging technologies and technologies. And this is my job to keep up with this. So I don't know if we need to accelerate innovation. I can barely keep up with it now. I think we need to organize, align, and focus on implementation of much of the technology and innovation that we have and figure out how to do that. I think that's our big challenge. There are many great tools for continuous intelligence, and, and we know many of them. Uh, Gartner, Gartner has some wonderful tools. There, there are literally thousands of resources. The industry uh, here today has talked about some great ones that are in industry here. But those publications, either monthly or single publication, 
uh, is probably not enough. What you're doing here is awesome. We're all learning, we're all sharing, uh, and that is, that's critical. Monday mornings, do you get intelligence briefs? Uh, are you, what are you plugged into? How do you know what's important and what's emerging? And the reason that's so important is because if you think we're moving fast now, look at the curve on the side. So in 50 years, think about the perception or a trillion times more technology that we have now as AI kicks in, uh, et cetera. So I encourage you to think about that, have mechanisms for, for continuous intelligence. Again, it's so important because emergence is occurring in so many areas. Uh, how many people are ready for nanosodium batteries for their AMRs? Or is it hydrogen fuel cell? Or is it a new lithium uh, formulation, for example? There's literally, the technology is just flowing at us and we have to be able to make sense of that. Continuous intelligence should drive continuous innovation. We should, we should all have programs for continuous innovation, filtering that. Um, this is one of the organizations and teams that, that I essentially set up. This is actually a product development process uh, life cycle from prototype to alpha, beta, production and deployment. And our objective was, was to cut half of the time out of every product development. We called that wrapping. And because by the time you develop and get it to market, likelihood is in today's environment, it could be obsolete. And we can't afford to do that. But we need clear mechanisms. And production and deployment are super important because continuous delivery of new innovations is what we're responsible for not only for our customers, for our companies, our shareholders, uh, that's, that's the real key in measuring that. And that has to be tied to in the very early stages of these five quadrants. If your initial product design and, and product thinking don't include strategies around supply chain, compute 2.0, the workforce, connecting to Industry 4.0, and especially sustainability, you missed the opportunity with, with product development. That, at least that's my opinion. And in thinking about products, thinking about your next product that hits the market that is plug and play ready with Industry 4.0, that has considered the workforce in terms of being intuitive and maybe gaming, um, it, it could be a whole lot of things. It could be what's emerging as AI coach coming out of, out of the system. It may have natural language uh, or, or even uh, intuitive language. So that's super important to think about in the early stages because this drives, this is going to drive the next steps and save time. We're also pulling safety certification in and I'll show you a little bit about that. The, the entire big picture. This is a big architecture conversation. I don't want to boil the ocean with you guys, uh, but I do want to talk about this entire big picture because I think it's so important. We can't build in silos, and we really need to understand the, the full technical roadmap. Supply chain 4.0, um, stability, sustainability in every action and process. And I'm going to tell you now, the new metric is every watt counts. As we start to look at, at basically EVs, autonomous mobile robots in the factories, the new metric is going to be how many watts per transaction, how many watts per mile, how many watts per, per, per final door step delivery, how many, how many watts did my robot cycle consume? And as we look at sustainability, we need to think about what the new metrics are going to be. Customer promise, resiliency, and this is speed of development. Digital twin. Digital twin is in equipment. Digital twin smart factory is underway. There are companies working on digital twin supply chain. And there's a great initiative in Europe, Digital Twin Earth, for the first time. Digital Twin Earth is a consortium to provide uh, a computer system to us humans who always fail to, to listen to Newton's third law. For every action, there's an opposite or equal reaction. So we EV everything, what's the impact on, on the rest of the world? 
What are we going to do with millions of tons of lithium uh, in, in the near future? If we plant a trillion trees, did we overplant? Uh, did we underplant? Is carbon emissions come down? Are we going to start starve the trees? What about our resource planning? Digital Twin Earth, I think, is is an amazing initiative that we should be plugged into from supply chain, from resource planning, uh, and the future. Real time data, self correcting optimizations. We know this geographic optimization, material manufacturing supply. An integrated technology strategy with Industry 4.0, Compute 2.0, sustainability workforce, and especially our customers. And there are some big population changes underway right now uh, in the country. So thinking about where your customers are going to be at, supply chain 4.0. AI supply chain, we, we've heard about that. It's primarily big data uh, analytics. And I, and I won't, I don't want to get into a conversation of AI versus machine learning versus advanced algorithms, that type of thing. Um, that's why we need to align, define, and standardize. And you'll hear me say that a lot. Autonomy and long haul, middle mile, last mile, final, final delivery, we know all this is being worked on. Resiliency, origin. There's new emerging models, micro-fulfillment, dark stores, lockers, open source, crowdsource, flexible workforce. I could work for you tomorrow. I could work for you on Wednesday, uh, maybe you on Thursday, right? I mean, that's the workforce we have today. Uh, this is what the smartphone has done and some of the prior conversations. Uh, the workforce has lots of options today with all this connected. Uh, smart stores are coming out. Factory automation is in demand. I just read an article where less than 5% of US factories have measurable amounts of, of automation. And if you think about the opportunity for this organization, what that means for us. AI and device edge, near cloud, we've talked about that. Sustainability and everything. Uh, and sorry if I hit you with the laser. Uh, and make on demand additive. The smart connected supply chain. A vision of how all of this comes together from an architecture standpoint. So from our industry 4.0 factory, to everything from intelligent highway, data ingestion. We're now talking about domain-specific architectures, uh, aggregated data from multiple enterprises. And, and that's what's important about a, a, data, a data architecture. AI architectures, specifically predictions, corrections, optimizations. We're talking about inventory placement, where we need things, and that, and that, that is absolutely critical. Promise, reliability, uh, and utilization of our overall supply chain. A great example is uh, I just bought an LG washer dryer set. You plug it in, it auto prompt, it auto connected to the network, auto connected, asked me for permission, granted it, it auto connected to the smart meter, it tells me when I should wash clothes, how I can save money based off of the smart meter. Um, I gave it access to my Amazon account to reorder detergent, and it does it. Uh, it throws off all error codes. It won't let me wash laundry until I clean the filter. So it's controlling the, the mechanism. It's feeding all that back to the manufacturer. This is my challenge for, for all of us. How do we get our robot systems to that level of connected architecture thinking and simplicity? How do we get our AMRs, our AGVs, our other connected systems to that level of, of architecture? That is a, that's gonna be a, a door opener for all of us, for our manufacturers, our integrators. This is going to help actually uh, the industry deploy and use the technologies that we have. Uh, we've been talking about autonomous supply chain for years. I think I did the first uh, talk on autonomous supply chain about 10 years ago. It's still developing. I, I know that we've talked about autonomous trucks, uh, autonomous long haul, uh, Airplanes today, the pilot may be in control of the plane less than two minutes of every flight. Uh, and some of the first flights across the Atlantic were done fully autonomous cargo planes as, as test. I don't, know, I don't know that we're working towards this, but it does seem like the pieces are coming together. If we are working towards it, we need a unified architecture again of how all of this is going to come together and work. Again, my challenge for our industry to think about the total architectures. And not that we're not 
And again, all five quadrants come in. Digital twin, everything from supply chain components to the plan that you talk about. And I can absolutely tell you, it reduces risk. It, it improves deployment speed. Uh, it pre-tests software. We digitally train in the digital twin. Um, we can test integration dependencies and pre-safety certify. The, we improve equipment reliability and maintenance cost. AI production planning based and real-time market dynamics will also be another part of, I believe, connected digital twin, new service models, and some great examples uh, have been given in some of the prior uh, talks. Supply chain visibility and what's happening with, with delivery, it's getting uh, shorter and shorter and shorter. So uh, it, it ha absolutely has to help with that. From an Industry 4.0 integration of smart factory to smart equipment and moving from reactive to predictive to self-healing and autonomous modality. I believe self-healing and autonomous modality are, are, are clearly things that we need to think about from reliability, uh, highly reliable, high, high performance systems. Okay, next. I may not be able to totally define AI, but at least here's a picture of it. This is GraphCore's. This is GraphCore's computational uh, uh, image of Bird. Bird is the natural language uh, AI engine, and I'm putting this up here as maybe what our supply chain AI brain is going to look like. You can see all the neural nets running. You can see inference. You can see deep learning. You can see the movement of all the data between the different and various neural nets that are that are going on. And in our control center in a few years, this may be the health monitor of, of our AI engine. I'm just throwing this out here as a, as a look ahead, but this is today. This is, a, this is a model of today's AI. And if that's what AI looks like, it's actually quite beautiful, I think. Industry 4.0. Um, speed requires aligned defined standards and architectures. And I know I keep repeating that, but I think that's one of our biggest opportunities. This is probably one of the best images uh, I can share with, with Industry 4.0 as, as we think about essentially a pre-architecture of smart machines, how, how they're connecting to our accurate 3D work environment models with virtual programming. I think this is a tool that we should all be using. You can take LiDAR through your building today. You can do a, an incredibly accurate map of the building and the tools are coming to do the 3D uh, design and the 3D programming with that 3D model that, that allow you to turn on a much faster uh, development project and, and more accurate development project. Watts improving uh, watts uh, uh, per, per compute from 50 percent, I just do a goal out to 5 percent. Many of our AMRs today require 65% of total onboard power just for compute and sensors, or 50%. And if, if we're following brain-inspired compute, 15, 15 watts for 100 trillion, uh, basically, neural net. So how do we get to 15 watts with, with human capability? Again, all new metrics, tops, flops, pops, infant cycles per transaction. Um, we need a workforce to manufacture and be able to work on all of this. Sorry if that slide was on. Um, robots are everywhere. They're helping us with everything. So service robots, agriculture, manufacturing, we're looking at security, mining, we've talked about AV, cars, drones, medical, um, construction. Construction is one of the things I think is almost the most interesting. Uh, with, with additive robots. So uh, we're using uh, metal additive robots um, to, to print rocket engines today. So the technology is just absolutely exploding. In industrial robots, um, we, can, we can design an industrial robot to do almost any function today. We have, this is just a, a few of the industrial robots that we use. And, and automated guided cars. So it's really about simplifying the application and deployment engineering of that. If we have to one-off the, the 
the CV, the ML, the design every time, we're not, going, we're not going to be able to scale this industry the way that we want to. So that's, that's my challenge. And if we look at the growth in AMRs, this is also another one of our, our big challenges. That's why compute is so important. Just a snapshot of the, the growth of autonomous mobile robots and cleaning and everything that we're doing. Emergence we've talked about, I'll go through that quickly, but again, uh, deploying sidewalk, final, final delivery, drones are still emerging. Uh, most of this is regulatory, uh, safety and regulatory. We have to prove it's safe for all of us, the people, uh, and our customers. So we're, I, I believe we're going to continue to work in that. We've seen a lot of good dialogue in that. We've talked about robotic convergence uh, and just being able to keep up with that. But these technologies also go to many, many other uh, technical developments. Innovation, a good innovation, this is B-Wise. So a full IoT, uh, let's save the bees. I'm all, for, I'm all for that. I hope my grandkids all see bees, have bees. Uh, we need to turn the, the bee trend around. But this is a full robotic beehive uh, support system. Solar operated, manages the hives, all kinds of data coming back from it. It's just a great example of what we're talking about with innovation or integration. Compute 2.0, clearly moving to the edge, computer vision and autonomy. New AI hardware promises to lower cost of deep learning, re reinforcement learning. AI model sizes are growing, in fact, a thousand times in two years. This is what the industry uh, is feeding back to me. Major progress in AI hardware. I want to share some of that with you. Uh, design space optimization, AI and design of AI. Foundries are approaching two to three nanometer uh, production. And that's just incredible. So, if they, can, if they can keep pushing the needle, we can keep pushing the needle. And, and that's, that's the challenge. Uh, integrated robotic edge platforms like Qualcomm RB5, there's many of them out there. They're, they're starting to emerge, but a full turnkey robotics platform. Incredible power. Uh, system on chip, CPU, IPU, TPU, uh, AI accelerators, all in one. Neuromorphic, uh, I may have been mentioned, Neuromorphic is essentially the, the, the design to emulate the brain's performance, mass, uh, mass computational paralyzed and or in peril, wafer scale. Um, if you, uh, Cerebrus, if you haven't seen this, this is the biggest chip in the world. Uh, it's not gonna fit in your cell phone, but it has incredible power. I'll share some of that. Mass miniaturized analog is coming back. Quantum is emerging. Photonic, which is light-based, so that's OPU. You can see optical processors emerging. We're supposed to see some of the first ones coming up. And then neuromorphic or AI accelerators. Here's brain chip. I'll share a couple of others. Let's just take a look at this. This one wafer platform, a hundred and trillion parameter model. So approaching brain scale AI on a single wafer. If you just look at the comparison of this chip and, and you just look at the advantages, uh, it's a thousand times you know, more memory, 123 times more cores on one chip. And if you look at the cores, 850,000 cores on one chip. And you can think about this running edge, think about bringing this computational power to the problems we're having with machine learning and AI today. There's some major, major uh, breakthroughs happening in AI hardware. This will scale in, in, in one instance to uh, 163 million cores. So back to our AI brain image, you can think about a scale of that. Domain-specific architecture, Again, here's, here's AI hardware at the edge, but also full autonomous control platforms, plug and play. Uh, I have all the inference, I have Tensor, uh, PyTorch, Onyx, I have all the software tools uh, developing and running at edge. If that's not enough, we'll run a hundred, we'll run a hundred uh, teraflop AI accelerator with it. And there's just one example of an AI accelerator. Uh, 
uh, out, of, out of Israel, a 15 millimeter by 15 millimeter system on chip, AI accelerator, 26 tops at 2.5 watts. And, and that may sound Greek, but that's our new language. That's our new language in, in this industry. And of course, what is your hybrid WCS, WMS, uh, and, and supply chain architecture going to look like? We offer a lot of these services in, in AWS. Uh, AWS externalizes tons of services. Here's a link. Many of your customers, thank you. Um, and we're expanding those services. Uh, Robo, Robo uh, Maker, uh, Industry 4.0. There, there are a lot of these services because I know a lot of companies cannot afford to, to build this full architecture and infrastructure. We have architects who will come in and study and help you with this as well. This is an AI enterprise of enterprise systems. And this, this is how I look at, in fact, this is pretty accurate of how I look at our entire integrated architecture or architectures. So we have asset management, we have environmental health and safety. These, these can be enterprise systems alone circling basically data lake. And what data lake brings is essentially being able to aggregate information from those multiple enterprises into one. And, and, and that's, I think, where the learning occurs. Here's all the questions that we've kind of already gone through. Building management is another key one. Um, all of this works together in our architecture, our buildings, essentially, they're, they're thoughtfully engineered, robotics, uh, connected, digital twin, they're being monitored by, by Global Doc. Workforce, we, we know all of this is creating new jobs and new technologies, and we have, to, we have to plan for that. Regular workforce training is going to be the new norm. Uh, workers have many options in today's environment, work from home, crowdsourcing, flexible workforce. There's, we all know there's a high competition for skilled workers in all of this. If, you, if you're turning away ML scientists, uh, and CV people, please see me right after the talk, right? I don't think anybody is doing that. Uh, there's, uh, there's currently 10 million unfilled positions in the, in the U.S. And automation is being driven by customer demand, population shifts, supply chain shifts, changing demographics. Uh, and we, get, again, we need a highly skilled and trained workforce to adopt this. I believe social machines can actually interact and, and help with the workforce and wellness. So, we need a collective plan for this workforce. We're not gonna be able to install, build, manufacture, engineer all of this. It's gonna take all of us, and it's gonna take a plan around workforce to make that happen. Sustainability, I'll close out quick here. Again, I think this is actually the most important thing that we can talk about uh, as, as an industry association. I'm super focused uh, that our grandkids are gonna have a much different life than, than, than what I know or what I've known. And that's not, that's not acceptable to me. We have to do a better job of the resources on this planet. Uh, we have to do a better job of our engineering work now. I think this generation, all of us, I think we have the biggest obligation to the future than any other generation. So take that apart. It's not a political, let's just look at the data. And, and we've, we've got to change. Um, Jeff Bezos really stepped up. This is his direct quote. This is our sustainability side. If you haven't looked at our sustainability program, it's totally open. It's collaborative. Um, we, we want partners to participate. And I want to share super quick as I close out. We've initiated the Climate Pledge Fund. Um, and then this is to collaborate in industry. Net carbon zero, new renewable energies, shipment zero. Uh, electric, electric vehicles, climate pledge fund. We allocated $2 billion. If, if you have a great idea, bring it to the climate pledge fund. We're funding startups, we're funding companies with ideas in this area to actually help drive it. We, we want to help drive change in this, and we want your participation. Um, and again, these are, this is more about the, the sustainability fund. Please check it out. Uh, get involved uh, and it's
it's going to take all of us. Okay, last set of questions. What is our collective industry sustainability plan? What's our collective industry 4.0 plan? Our collective AI and DSI or DSA standardization plan? Our workforce upskilling plan? Uh, do we have initiatives or can we adopt initiatives like PPA? Why not? Why shouldn't we say in five years our factories are going to take 20% less? Pick a, pick a number, but again, this is the collaboration part. This is what takes all of us. We need plug and play. We need to simplify. We can't have ML scientist after ML scientist after engineer uh, and AI, you know, neuromorphic uh, experts on every robot uh, installation and development. That's a huge opportunity for us. Can we improve design to employment acceleration? And again, support the standards and certification bodies to accelerate. I think that's a big part of it. I, I think collectively, we need a, a multi-organization initiative to help drive this next generation of certifications. And I'm not trying to boil the ocean. Three things uh, are built one block at a time with a plan. And, and I'm just saying, I think we, you know, I, I know we're all working hard. I know we have plans. But I think it's a full architecture enterprise plan uh, that we need. And by the way, it must have been daunting when Pharaoh came to the builders and said, hey, I've got an idea. There's three pyramids. The one in the middle is 2.3 million blocks. They weigh between 2 million and 15 million pounds each. Um, what, a, what a daunting task. And by the way, and go build three of them. So I know we can do it. Um, that's my collaborating for a better world. If you would like a virtual tour, uh, take a snapshot of that. And, and you can go on an Amazon virtual tour. And it talks about uh, the products uh, that I just went through. Thank you very much for inviting me and uh, having me come uh, talk and share with you. Thank you.